Hello everybody! In part 1 we covered what dungeon draft settings do and how to use the map wizard. Now we're going to start fresh with a blank slate and get more into the DIY tools of dungeon draft. Keep in mind that if you'd prefer a written guide to learning dungeon draft you can check out the description where I'll have the article version of the dungeon draft basic series available. We'll be starting off with the design tools which is the very first set of tools in the left hand sidebar. The first tool in this section is the building tool. This lets you place buildings complete with floors and walls using three basic shape options. The square button makes, as promised, square and rectangular buildings, the circle makes circular buildings, and the heart button lets you make polygonal shapes by clicking to place points wherever you want and then forming them into unique buildings when you close the shape. You can also double click at any point to mark the last point and Dungeon Draft will close the loop for you automatically. Something neat about this tool is that you can expand an existing building by overlapping it with another. So if you make a rectangle between two shapes like so, it basically becomes a hallway. You can do this with any of the building options to get complex interconnected structures. When you're on the heart shape tool, once you have a point placed, you can hold shift and click where you want the next one placed and then drag to make a curved wall. The line indicating where the wall will be changes from yellow to purple and you can move your mouse until it's precisely where you'd like it. If you need to make a change, you can always click the Edit Points button and hover over a wall to see its points. You can then click and drag the existing points to move them, or click in the middle of a wall to make a new point. Lastly, holding Alt while placing points puts you in an Erase mode to quickly clear away any structures or parts of structures that you don't want. Now let's take a look at the base asset options that we've got access to. As you can see, we have a lot of options for floor and wall styles. There are 13 uh, floor options and 5 wall options in the base software. If you hover over any of the walls, you'll see a preview of it which, if you made the change I mentioned in the preferences in the last video, should appear at full size immediately. If not, it will appear after a short delay. Each of these walls looks white because they are colorable and you can customize the color of all of the walls and several of the floors by clicking the color picker down below, which gives you a lot more variety. You also have control over the alpha channel, which lets you control how opaque the floor is. This can make it look less saturated. You can even switch colors and floor textures between rooms on the same map, and they'll retain their respective floors even if you join them together with another building. However, a building does need to have the same wall type throughout it, so if a building has wooden walls but you join it with a stone walled building, all the walls will convert to the one you currently have selected, that is, unless you're using the wall tool. Let's take a look at that now. The next tool down is the wall tool. This tool lets us add in walls, which can be freestanding or placed inside to create additional rooms. You'll see lots of the same options here, edit points, the same wall textures we have in the buildings tool, and the color selector. The same controls also apply, like holding shift to add a curved wall. What's new though is the over under button. This won't let you go over walls placed by the building tool, but it does let you choose how to layer inner walls. There's also a button to toggle shadows on or off for the next wall that you place. Next up we have the portal tool, which is for adding doors and windows. The first option at the top here lets us block or allow light, depending on if you want to let light from Dungeon Draft's dynamic lighting tool pass through it. The anchored setting means that the door needs to be placed on a wall. When it's active, there's a rotate 180 button to flip its direction. If you switch it to freestanding though, the rotate 180 button changes to a rotation slider that you can also control with your scroll wheel. And this will let you place doors anywhere on the map and at any angle in case you want a freestanding door or for the door to look open. After that we have the cave brush tool. You can scroll to go between the brush sizes or click the one that you want. You can also change the color of the floor and walls of the cave, and like we saw before, you can adjust the opacity of them with the alpha channel at the bottom of each color picker window. You can see terrain through the bottom of translucent cave floors, so you can get some interesting effects or even replace the floor entirely. Then we have the brush mode, which can be set to dig cave or blast open. Dig cave will let you brush in cave structures, and blast open will let you create an opening in the cave wherever you brush. Like the building tool, hold alt to erase instead. This is an easy way to make changes to a cave layout that the map wizard generated. Toggling the last button to show blast opened area will make the opening clearly visible with hatch marks. Next is the pattern shape tool. This is sort of like placing floors without placing walls, which can be useful for making more intricate and fancy floors with multiple different patterns. This tool works the same as the others have when set to square, circle, or polygonal placement, as well as being able to edit points and rotate the placed pattern. 
You can also change the color of the patterns the same way you could with the floors and building tool. There is one other option here that you'll see in a lot of other places though, which is to select a layer to place the pattern on. By default, it will use user layer one, but there are eight different layers that you can place patterns and objects on depending on what you want to be above or below whatever you're placing. The last tool in this section is the roof tool. This is an awesome tool for quickly shelling out city streets and villages. You have two different ways to create these roofs, either a quick box, which lets you quickly drag out a rectangular shape or manually where you can click to place points individually. There are three different roof types you can pick from, gable, hip, and dormer, and for each of those roof types, you can also choose from three different roof styles, like a red clay, gray slate, and thatched for when you want to make some thatched roof cottages for Trogdor to burn. Setting some to go above others with the over-under options can give you some great layered looks, especially since these roofs automatically apply a shadow effect along the gables. You can toggle the shade effect on or off. With it on, you can also control the direction of the shade on the roofs, as well as how dark the shade should be. That covers the design tools. These are what you'll use to create the buildings and caves that are the core of your map. Next up, we'll take a look at the terrain tools in Dungeon Draft to make the outside look as great as the inside. I'll see you in the next one.